Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about iterating in another way. We're going to iterate on this thing that we talked about in the previous video. And we're going to iterate it on, on it in a different way in terms of texturing as well as some creative masking and blending. When we left it last time, we were here. And we've got, you know, these dirt flows down here. We've got mainly rock and it was a nice combination. I thought I'd go back and take a look at other ways that I could blend in here with the original erosion. So if we go with this just rock formation that we've, we've created, I looked at that erosion and because it's similar enough, because of how we blended it back in, um, we've got these flows that come directly off of it. And if we wanted to, we could take the sand flows from this, but keep the rock because the erosion, the original process of the erosion, not the what, what we did where we created, a, we blended it back in, um, will always eat away at the rock, meaning that uh, our original rock formations will be taller than this and we'll have those flow regions underneath. So I went ahead and did a quick set to 100% and set it to max. And what we get is the rock with the sediment from the, the erosion. Okay, cool. But maybe we can be a bit more creative with it. So if we play with gamma and what gamma does is it takes that mid range and it brings it towards the either the high level or the low level. So black and white stay where they are, but the mid range shifts. In terms of uh, environmental pieces like this, right, in terms of terrains, what that means is in the higher range, it will create a bulge and in the lower range, it'll go concave. So by playing with these two different values, we can take this soil from the erosion, the dirt element as it were, and we can create sort of like a bulge effect or a contraction effect, which will ultimately change how these two intersect. So I've taken the gamma here and I've beefed it up a very small amount. A little bit goes a long way, so 0 0.05, right? One is default, it's exactly the same, unchanged, and this takes it up. So if we look at that, you'll see a little bit more than just the soils coming in. We're getting some soft eroded rock here next to some hard eroded rock. Right? It's blending in a much a uh, more different way. So see that? See the rock come in? Just a few different areas. What that actually looks like is this. The red region is our rock formation and the white region is our new soil. So to come up with a mask for this you have to go between this and one of your original um, formations, right? So either this one or this one. Doesn't matter which one you come off of. I went off the rock. And um, our combined version. So between those two, we do a new combine and set it to difference 100%. And what you're left with is everything that's different and unique about them. So you can see all the grooves, all the dirt that's in the grooves and the channels that are in there. You can see some of the areas of the rock that overlapped with the dirt. And of course, these big areas of sediment filling in those regions. In order to really isolate those from the flat area, the easiest way to do that is to use a height now, if I go through a height, set the fall off to absolutely zero, so it's as sharp as possible, and take this to the lowest possible level, which is 1%, it's still not fine enough in order for me to get 
what I want. So what I typically do is I will take this information and I will do an auto level to it. With the auto level, it will bring up all those values which were really small and make them much larger. As a result, I end up with the possibility of having finer control because now these values are so much larger. My, my overall detail gets more granular. So instead of this really rough and coarse um, attempt where it's missing huge chunks, now it's refined, right? So I'm getting all these, you know, areas that were lost otherwise. So it's a much better mask. It's, it's much more closer to the edge. I even have a little bit of room if I wanted to, to apply a tiny bit of fall off on it, which will, you know, soften the overall thing. So this is, this is good. So this is what's providing me with this, this mask. If I hadn't done that, just so you can see, I'm losing large chunks of the, the dirt. So there we go. Okay. Well, that's cool. Now what? So now we're going to try and texture it. So we're taking this visual information and I'm going to process it with soil as my first sort of pass, which is great. Uh, it produces uh, a nice looking result. It's nice and soft, especially when you have it graded, which typically I like to do. Uh, by default, it's not set to graded. It will give you uh, a better view of just like the cracks and fissures. It really isolates it, so it's kind of like applying contrast to it. And applied to the uh, an appropriate type of sat map, it can look fairly nice with just soil, nothing else. It's important that you choose something that has um, not too many tiny little details in it. Uh, it's it's got a general sort of a soft transition between the different regions so you can see how that that looks there versus something like this which is a bit more contrasty or there's lots of tiny little lines We're looking for something that's a little bit softer even uh, gradated and that will give you that sort of appearance of a flow in this particular case um, these are picking out like uh, raised highlights areas that are sort of exposed that would be, you know, a bit more worn. So it produces something nice. However, often what I will do is I like to take soil and then run it through soil yet again. Running it through a second pass of soil will give you even smaller details. It'll focus into um, other regions giving me more pattern and design to that surface. So if I want to add more detail to it, that's often where I will go. We can even blend the two of these together, 50%, and we get something sort of halfway in between. We get, you know, the big sort of forms and then some of the smaller forms, and they blend together rather, rather nicely. Plugging a sat map into those, you can see how that could reflect something along the lines of, say, marble. And you notice that the pattern that I've chosen is also a little bit smaller because the details themselves are also smaller. We can use the contrast to, to pick out details in the idea of rock and um, it, it's, it just produces something nice. If you want to get really crazy with the cheese whiz, you can take the soil and apply yes another soil and that will again bring in tinier and tinier details really focusing in on the smaller information now remember we're only at 1k here i wanted to do this because it would be faster to quickly process but as you get into higher and higher resolutions you can have um, tighter and tighter sequence noise uh, in these these areas bringing in really fine detail so I've got the first two blended 50%. If I add this one in, again blending, I'm gonna blend to 33%, which is one third. And the end result 
is lots of fine little detail. You can see the original shape of the original flow. It's one third of each one of these. So it's, you know, one third of the really soft even flow, another third of the medium detail, and another third of the tiny details. I can use them in different balances uh, if I wanted to. And another thing that you should note about this is that they essentially invert. So if you wanted to, to, to have them play supporting roles to the original detail, then you should invert them first and then blend them. But if you want them to kind of counterbalance each other, just going back and forth is fine. So the end result of this is even with something smooth, I get lots of granular detail, uh, tiny little bits. So I've got that sort of original flow shape, which is nice, but I also got tiny little details in that texture, which is nice. So that's one way that you can approach this for creative masking. Taking it uh, through the, uh, the soil as one process and branching off the soil, as I said, with a soft sort of transition type gave me something. It's not super saturated, but kind of cool. I can take that and I can go with another type of mask. This one, its particular focus is the actual flow, where things kind of fall and flow out. I've gone ahead and taken this up because by default, the, the default value is really fine and um, I almost always end up having to increase the cycles. So I brought this up to 43 and I get this and I run that through a sat maps with a little bit more detail, a little bit more contrast and a little bit more saturation. This will mean that by blending it with this lower saturation, lower detail version, I will get a lot more variation off of it. So even at a 50%, it blends together. And now we can see these patterns of flow. We can have a variety of saturated and desaturated regions. Some that are a little bit warmer, then some that are a little bit cooler by, by default. And it gives a lot of variety to the flow of that dirt. It also provides you know, plenty of color information in the uh, stone texture as well, which is fine. And I could probably even just leave it like this and it would be okay. But of course, I wanted to uh, continue to be creative and, and get detail into the rock. So I've come off that soil and just like soil is the node that's called texture. Texture, you'll notice, will be actually fairly similar in terms of the response, the visual response between them. The difference with texture is it has a little additional processing on it, which makes it a little bit more unique. Uh, I have a video talking about that particular tool and the, the details of it, so you can watch that um, separately. What I've done with that is I've got one texture coming off of soil which is isolating for the rock patterns, this deeper sort of areas of the surface, right? The, uh, the distinct grooves. And then for the second sat maps, it's coming off the texture, which has got the finer details. And that one is isolating a lot of the really um, stark crevices. Now these were chosen again, not at random. They were chosen for which features they're isolating and also for what colors they're representing. Both are relatively desaturated, both have enough contrast for it to, to come across. By mixing them together 50%, I get this. I get those deep grooves sort of isolated and, and um, enhanced, and I've got the really tiny grooves also isolated, and we've got the raised sections as being soft. Now, of course, I need to bring this in with the, uh, the colors that are coming from this and they don't currently match. 
I can try and take a um, color effects, apply a hue saturation and bring the saturation up. I'm going to play with the hue to get some redness. But what you're noticing here is that despite trying to do that, if you have values that are too desaturated to start off with, it's not going to work. There's another factor that you have to be um, considerate of is that the color effects in terms of the hue slider, uh, it depends on what color you start with, which will determine what colors you can access because the, uh, the slider doesn't seem to quite go as far as it needs to in order to enhance um, colors that you start with. It's just enough to go away from them. So if you started off, say, like with a green color and you wanted to enhance that green, um, all you're going to do is, by pulling this over, you're going to get into to, um, more of a warm color. It's going to move away from green and um, eventually it'll move to like a, a dark blue. So keep that in mind. So desaturated values won't give you much and then anything else you, you're going to have to adjust. So there's an other way that you can use to blend those colors. So I've just come off of this texture node. It didn't really matter where I got it from because of how I'm using it, but um, this reinforces some of the patterns. So coming off of this one, I've got some very bright colors in the color range that I want. So one is sort of like a warm orangey tan color, the other one's a orangey red color. Um, I'm going to take those in and I'm going to multiply them against that. So what this does is it maintains the contrast that I have and it brings them into that range. And because there's lots of color there, I can now go ahead and pull back on that and um, it will help marry the whole thing to it. And I can still adjust color from that point. Uh, I can also just go back to this and adjust the colors here to try and, you know, um, play with it if I need to. If I wanted to enhance, a, you know, more of a green tone or something like that, I could then change those colors and then come back through and that would be there. So it's easier to pull away color than it is to add color with one of these color effects notes. So by doing this, I've got all the contrast still there. And just to marry it just a little bit further, I'm going to blend a small amount of that original uh, texture in. So just, just tweaks it a little bit. It pulls down the contrast just a tiny amount and brings the color a little bit closer to what's here. Once I've done that, I can mask the two of them together. So I've got my, my, my rock information. I've got my um, soil and dirt information. They're close to each other, so they should blend nicely. Now it's time to put that mask into place. Now the mask as I had it was a little bit harsh, right? That's kind of a rough edge. I'd like to soften that edge. I've already got stuff here that I can make use of. If you can reuse resources, your entire um, tree will be more efficient. So look for opportunities to mix and match different things that you've already calculated. If you can do that, so much the better. I've got this soil and flow, and when I combine them together, I get this if I provide it as square root. What I would recommend to you if you want to play around is if you've already built this train, go ahead and do the soil and, and flow as I've done and play with the different results that you see coming from the different combinations. So multiply, add, um, difference, etc. See what kind of combinations you get from there. I think you're going to find some very interesting combinations that look like uh, proper snow flows um, and they enhance each other in interesting ways. So have a look at that. So I'm satisfied with this. This provides me with uh, some interesting variety. Um, I could still, you know, riff off of this one by, you know, plugging a soil into that one and see what kind of additional details will come off of that. Experimentation, iteration, uh, you know, seeing what happens. Again, that's the general idea of this exploring mode that we want to be in when we're trying to create stuff. But in this particular case, I did some of that and I'm, I'm satisfied with, with where this is going. So I've taken that and my original 
uh, mask and that original mask I went ahead and applied a slight blur to it. Uh, if we look at it from this angle we can see it a little bit better. So I went from harsh to a little bit soft. So it's just uh, 0.5. It's not a huge change. So blending that 50% 50, 50 with my pattern here I get the mask plus this. Now this is not a great blend. Um, I could go ahead and have done like an add or a screen to this and make it 100%, but I actually like the fact that it's kind of in between. And the reason for that is I'm going to actually run it through a height node. And I'm going to play with the fall off and the min value. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me, I can still maintain a bit of a soft edge, but um, this bits of dirt, they're just helping marry into those grooves, which I made slightly higher contrast, if you remember. Uh, that way they, they'll still kind of pop through. But it's going to bring some of that original soil pattern dirt into these regions, just helping marry everything together. So the end result is, instead of this, we have this. So taking my rock texture and my dirt texture and blending them, you can see that they marry together quite well. There's enough variation off of it that we can isolate some of these, but they're not sticking out too much. We could isolate them even further. We can enhance this. I have direct access here. I can always take it and say, you know what, actually, I want it to be a little bit lighter. And voila, there it is. There's a little bit more you know, contrast between the rock and the dirt. I could take the dirt and say, you know what, I want it to be a bit more darker, a bit more redder. You know, I can play with those as well. The, uh, the overall idea here is just getting the color variation, the blends um, just right and getting that mask to work. And it's um, being creative, ultimately. That's what it is. So hopefully you've got something interesting from this whole overall process. Um, think about you know different experiments that you can try, uh, mixing and blending these. We've only played so far with just the the soil and the flow. There are a whole bunch of these in here. You could you know also play with uh, curvature, um, mix it with slope. There's uh, things like velocity, which is very similar to flow, except that it has a very directional sort of pattern. One area gets a lot of rain, the other side does not. Um, you've got the surfacer. Uh, trace provides something very similar to curvature, but it's a little bit uh, nicer. You have things like the growth pattern. Um, there's, there's just so many different possibilities. So, and also keep in mind that you don't have to just use these to create masks. You can create masks from things like pulling an erosion. You can pull an erosion on a surface and then not actually use that erosion. Use the erosion data that comes off of it as a starting point for your masking. Right? I throw the erosion on there, I do a really simple value with it, and it's going to give me something detailed. It's going to have uh, areas of flow that uh, relate to the cracks and fissures. I could use uh, a breaker node for the same reason where it's going to go and find little cracks and areas to, to isolate. So be creative. Um, try different things. See what happens. And I will see you in the next video.